Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Ephesians 2.19 a couple pages back. Ephesians 2.19 Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Amen. One more. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I guess if I had to call one of these a key text, it would be this one. Second Corinthians chapter five. We're going to start at verse 18. It reads, "And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Notice what ministry we have. Because I've heard a few and I've heard of some that are on the streets even now as we speak that are not the ministry of reconciliation. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then... We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. Let's pray. Father, I bless your name. I just praise you. I lift your name, God. There is none above you. There is none like you. You stand alone, God, far above any other false name that we could name right now. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved but Jesus Christ. And we just thank you, God. We've come here to meet with you, to praise you, to think upon things above and rather on things beneath. God, we bless you. We praise you for all that you have done. And we thank you, God, that you foreordained the things that you shall do. Do. And I thank you, God, for what you've purposed in your heart to do in and through this church and in the lives of the people. And I'm asking God that you do in this house tonight something that's lasting, something that has great eternal value, something that will withstand the fire as it's tried. I'm asking God that you bring each every one of us, God, forth as gold. I'm asking God that you bring us as pure as you can bring us pure, God, that you'd stir our hearts and work a work in us, God, and baptize us afresh with fire from heaven. We commit ourselves unto you you we ask in God that you would do a mighty work a fresh work a new thing in the midst of this place I'm asking for a reviving of anything that's stale and has fallen asleep I'm asking God for a destroying of anything that's alive in our life that has no place in our life I'm asking God that you help us to put away everything that brings dishonor to your name I'm asking God that you would move in mighty power and every last thing in our life every way of thinking that we might have that's not in consistency with you dismantle it everything God that's on our table spiritually, God, that you don't like or see fit for us, I'm asking that you sweep it clean and bring new order. Have your way in the midst of this place in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Y'all can be seated. And again, folks, and I say this, and I don't, I don't make any apologies for it. Some of you roll your eyes and your mind of your eye, that is, and, and think, why in the world am I hearing these sort of things again? And I will sow it and sow it and sow it and sow it and sow it like the sower sowed it. Until something takes root and begins to bear fruit. Amen. And the evidence of it bearing fruit will be the way that you pray, the way that you walk, the way that you talk. So you ain't got to tell me whether or not it's received or having its full effect. We've just got ears to hear, so we're watching. But folks, God's wanting to do something in this generation, in this hour. And I meet far too many people in this world that simply are not prepared to meet God. And let me just... Why clean the slate of what I just said? I'm not going to even bring into the equation the lost right now. When I look at the church, most of the church is not kingdom minded. They are not living the way that God has called them to live. We've got a heavy, heavy dose of religion and what we think is right unto us, but it ends up in death. There's all kinds of stuff in the church. But at the end of the day, if we were honest and you look at the church for what we see, we don't see a lot of Jesus Christ. 
Bless you, Lord. The Savior that I met that's in this book right here, I don't see a lot of him in the people that I meet in the church. And I'm not talking bad about the bride. I'm not doing that. What I'm saying is somebody's got to sow some things that would bring a different way of thinking. Somebody's got to sow some things that are in continuity with the kingdom of God. Somebody's got to take hold of it after it's sown and apply it in their life in such a way that they say, you know what, this has got to be so. You can tell a tree by its fruit. What has your tree got on it? You know, if you take most Christians today, you could squeeze them and what would come out of them would not be Christ. And that concerns me. And what does come out of the mouth of the, of the church on most cases and, and what they teach and what they speak and what they believe really concerns me. Yes, Lord. Folks, once you're saved, you're transformed into a new creature, the Bible says. What it does not say is that you're just forgiven and your slate is wiped clean, that things are put away and you get a fresh start. That is not the gospel. That is not what happens when you get born again. You do get forgiven. Your, your slate is in essence clean, but you're really given a new slate. You're given a new, you're made a new creature. You're no longer that same creature that you were before. And I do believe that's the essence of the text. And I want to harp on that for a second because I believe it's more than forgiveness of sins. I believe it rests beyond the fact that we're pardoned and we're justified and we don't have to answer for our crimes. I believe it goes beyond that in the fact that we're made a new creature. And that doesn't just mean he throws away the first and establishes another that's made in the likeness of the first. No, he makes us into a new creature that's in the likeness of the Son of God that came, that by faith in the seed, which is Jesus Christ, we become partakers with that seed, that we're born after the same incorruptible seed, that we are a new creature born from above, like unto our Father, just like in the similitude of Jesus Christ who came before us. But folks, when you get born again, you're given a new assignment, and that assignment is not religion. That assignment is Jesus Christ and His kingdom. Folks, and when you get born again, right out the gate, you become an ambassador. That's right. Now we've touched on that word before, but we've never really talked about it. And we're going to talk about it. Folks, I don't believe there's any higher call for the Christian right now. In this life or in the kingdom that you've been translated into than to live your life in honor of God and to fulfill what it is God's called you to fulfill. And what I believe the new creature is designed to do is walk as the ambassador that they've been placed into this kingdom to walk as. And furthermore, if you've been given a job or a, or a position in a kingdom, then it's expected of you to walk in that position as it is that it, according to the dictates of that position, according to the one who gave you that position. That you don't make up the rules. It's not up to you how it's going to go. You don't call the shots. The one who puts you in this kingdom, who translated you from one kingdom to another, made you to be an ambassador. And your job is to fulfill that position. And I believe that as the sons of God, there is no higher calling but to glorify Jesus Christ in this life by walking out what He's called us to walk out. Now, I don't believe the greatest goal in the believer's life is their job or their employment or what it is that they do in this career. I do believe that where your position has something to do with your assignment, but at the end of the day, you're to be an ambassador of a kingdom wherever it is that you're positioned in this life. You might be down at the McDonald's working a register, but nevertheless, if you've been bought with the price, you're an ambassador. You've been sent from a place above out into a world to go out and bring heaven into that earth and be the representation of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world. Amen. Folks, I'm going to build to get to a place so that you understand where I'm coming from. Just like a prince or a son of a king would act like royalty. Sons of God have got to act like royalty. We're the ambassadors of Jesus Christ here on earth. We've got to start talking like ambassadors. We've got to start thinking like ambassadors. We've got to start walking and living and presenting ourselves like ambassadors. We've got to start standing before the enemy and before every opposition as ambassadors. 
Because that's your call in this life as a Christian. I want to read to you the actual definition in in secular books on what an ambassador is. And I want you to think about it. An ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Let me read that again because the Bible says that this world is not your home. That you're sojourners from another place. And if you're an ambassador, that means God has called you and appointed you into a position and sent you into a place that is not your home. It says an ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Church, we touched on this before, and I believe in order to really make sense of ambassadorship, that I have no choice but to paint you as briefly as I can again a picture about some things that I said before. <clears throat> Folks, God's purpose, God's purpose and plan for that matter, always has been and always will be to extend and establish His heavenly kingdom on earth. I don't know if you heard me. Let me say it again. God's purpose always has been and always will be to extend and establish His heavenly kingdom here on earth. It began with Christ. It is continued with the church. And it will ultimately be fulfilled by Christ personally. So again, God doesn't just want to extend His kingdom on earth. He wants to establish His kingdom on earth as well. But in order to do that, like I said before, He's going to have to administrate earthly colonies. And I'm not going to get hung up on this because we've been down this road before, but we must touch on it again. And I do believe in order to administrate earthly colonies, He's got to do it through the sons or the ambassadors of God. The God isn't rising up off the throne, if you will, to come down and do it Himself. He purchased you with a price. He puts you into the position. And now He's sending you forth as that ambassador. And what it means to look like an ambassador means you go in His stead. That means you say what He says. You do what He does. You do it how He does it. You do it the way He would approach it. You walk like He would walk. You talk like He would talk. You do what He would do. Amen. Now, I do want to ask a disclaimer type of question to the church. When you pray prayers, do they sound like something God would pray? When trials come in your directions and fiery darts are fired off at you, do you handle them the way that God would handle them himself? You're the ambassador of God. If you intend to function as an ambassador, you've got to know what you possess and who you are as an ambassador. This isn't just metaphorical speech. When God says you're an ambassador, that's exactly what He means. I want to read to you the definition one more time of a colony. A colony is a group of people of one nationality or ethnic group living in a foreign city or country under the control or influence of another country, typically a distant one. We'll read it again because this one's right and somebody's wanting to get it. A colony is a group of people of one nationality or ethnic group living in a foreign city or country under the control or influence of another country, typically a distant one. And I gave the illustration of colonization in a few messages back, given the examples of places such as France and Haiti. Haiti was colonized by France. If you go to Haiti right now, you will see that they dress similar to the French. They eat food just like the French do. They speak the same language that the French do. They do the things that the French do. The buildings have the same decor. In fact, they're built the same way. They look the same way. They look just like you would find in France in Haiti. And the whole point is, is because France sent out ambassadors into Haiti to colonize Haiti and to cause it to be and look and function like France. 
So I'm telling you right now without a shadow of a doubt that the intent of God always has and always will be for he heaven to be colonized in earth. That God has positioned you as ambassadors. He's put you in a position. He's made you to go out into the world and function and talk and walk and think just exactly like He does. You're in His position. He says, I've given you the keys to the kingdom which abides in you. I want you to go out and do things just exactly like I would. Go in my stead and be an ambassador. And when you go out into the world, bring heaven with you. Establish it here on earth. I want it to look like heaven on earth. I want it to sound like heaven on earth. I want people talking like heaven when you get done with them. I want them thinking like people do in heaven when you get done with them. When you get done, ambassador, doing what you do, I want heaven to be revealed on earth through what you've done by the power of the Spirit. I'm sending you out with the tools. I've given you of my Spirit. I've given you my authority. I've given you the keys. I've given you everything you lack no good thing. Now go out and do what I would do. Go out and say what I would say. Walk the way that I would walk so that your community, your generation, your schools, your churches, your legislative system, your government, everywhere it is that you go, it would look like heaven because my ambassadors went out to the world and did their job right. Amen. Church, the whole point of colonization is so that this world will end up looking like that world. The whole point of what God has done by making you ambassadors and giving you the tools to do what you do is not just so you could walk in victory and power for self, but so that you could go out and be His representative. Right. So in the event... That any one territory is colonized by another, the acting governmental authority is one that's always sent from headquarters. They do not go to that nation and choose somebody that's a native. They send somebody that is, that is from headquarters. They don't come to you before you're born again when it is that you belong to that nation. What they do is they make you an old creature and they put you into a new position. Now you're from another land and then they send you out as an ambassador with the tools and the power and the things you need to get the job done. What concerns me is that some of you don't want to hear it because you're not even used to it. And it's weird to me because what in the world is better about your current estate of Christianity? I want to read to you a few points. I made some points here. I am not here to preach a message tonight. I'm here to teach. First, ambassadors are not voted in. They're appointed by whoever is king and ruler. That means we don't call a committee and decide who it is that's going to be ambassador. Whoever's king over this nation or whoever's king over this kingdom, whoever's in charge of you is the one that appoints you. You don't decide whether or not you're ambassador. You don't say, well, I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, but I don't want this ambassadorship. It is not up to you. You're purchased with a price. God has appointed you to be ambassador, to go out into the world and function as ambassador. There is no vote in the matter. It's a matter of being appointed. Amen. In John chapter 15, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained there literally means appointed you. I did, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And furthermore, I didn't just choose you to come in. I chose you to come in and then go back out. I have appointed you unto my service. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says, But ye are chosen. The word chosen means appointed. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You didn't pick God, He picked you. As much as the full gospel world wants to lean in that direction, you never picked God, God chose you. It is written. Amen. Secondly, ambassadors are appointed to represent their kingdom or their state or their nation or whatever it is they're representing. They are not appointed to represent themselves. That means as you go out as an ambassador, it's not done your way. It's not done by your way of thinking. If your way of thinking and your way of doing things does not line up with that of the one that sent you out, then you are in violation of what you've been appointed to. First Timothy chapter four says, be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. 
In other words, be an example of the things you know that this kingdom is about. So that as you go out, you will begin to colonize your region. You'll begin to colonize your family and your workplace. It'll begin to look like heaven when you begin to function as an example of this kingdom. Ephesians 5 says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Folks, the word followers there in the Greek best translates, if you'll look it up in the Greek, as imitators. In other words, be ye therefore imitators of God as dear children. Somebody tell me what it would look like to imitate God if we really imitated God. How do we suppose God would deal with people? How do we suppose God would walk through this world? When he prayed for people that had a need, how would he speak it? What would he say? When he went out and witnessed, if that's what he did, how would he approach it? When he got down on his knees at night, how would he pray that prayer? When he felt like he needed to pay a bill, how would it sound when he began to present his need to the throne? Be imitators of God. God is love. Amen. What would it look like to imitate God and to walk like God, to speak like God, to think like God, to act like God? What would that look like in this world? The thing is, an ambassador does not have a choice in the matter. You're to go out, you're to represent, you're to do things his way, not your way. There is no divide in the matter. A house divided can't stand. You can't go out and do things God's way sometimes and then the rest of the time say, well, I want to give some input, Lord. Or I want to add this to the book or take it away. Ambassadors are only committed to the kingdom's interests. They're not committed to other interests. They run the race that is set before them with no divided interests. They're appointed to a job to do a work. They're appointed to a job to do a work a certain way in a certain place. I said in a certain way in a certain place. That if France sent you out as an ambassador to Haiti and you wound up in Cuba, something's not right. They didn't send you to Cuba even though you see a need. That's not where you were sent. And furthermore, when you get there, if you begin to employ things that aren't in consistency with what they do in France, then you've missed your mark as an ambassador still yet. My concern for the church, if I can just be frank, is that we've taken this book and we've added some things to it or taken some things away from it. We've added a few... uh, Doctrinal issues that are nowhere to be found in these pages anywhere whatsoever because we thought maybe it would help God or we thought maybe God forgot to mention it. You're in violation as your job as an ambassador. You were given a manual, not asked to write one. Ambassadors embody the state or the kingdom that they represent. I want to rewind to a text. Proverbs 16 says to commit thy works unto the Lord. Galatians 2 says that you crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I, Christ that lives in me. It means I'm not my own. I don't do this thing the way that I see fit. I don't walk in this kingdom the way that I see fit. I don't receive all the goods from God and then go out and do things the way that I feel like is best. My job is to colonize my area. Everywhere I go, everywhere I put my foot to and my hand to is to be colonized like heaven. It's to look like heaven and to sound like heaven when I'm through with it. When I'm having a bad day at work and I don't want to witness to the truck driver when he pulls in, I'm an ambassador. That's not my place. That I move on with the gospel anyway, even though I'm annoyed. That I move on with the gospel anyway, even though I'm having a bad day. When I get bit by a dog at work, I still believe that I need to present the gospel because I'm an ambassador. I still got to represent one that is loved because I'm an ambassador. I still got to watch my tongue because people are listening and I'm an ambassador. Amen. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you? But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me. Ambassadors are the embodiment of the kingdom that they represent. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is within you and you've got the keys to it. It's already in there. 
And as an ambassador, where you go, you're taking that kingdom with you. It's your responsibility to let that kingdom out into the world. Yeah. Self-preservation and what you're going through and what you're thinking is often the reason that it doesn't get out into the world. But your job and your responsibility as an ambassador is to go into the world and let it out. Next point is ambassadors only speak government position. They never give their own opinion. I feel like I've touched on this already, but every ambassador you can look up right now, any nation, anywhere in the world, they are not to give their own opinion. Their opinion does not matter in respect to their job. They are called to go out and to do a work, to speak only what it is they've been told to speak, to share only what it is they've been told to share, to do only what it is they've been told to do. And it's funny because a lot of the church has approached church growth in a certain way that's not consistent with this book. They've approached witnessing in a way that's not consistent with this book. They've approached how they deal with people that come in that don't look like them that's not consistent with this book. You're an ambassador. God said, here's your rules. Here's your book. Follow this book. This is how you do it. Your opinion is not important in the matter. I didn't ask your opinion. I purchased you. I put you in a position. I sent you out. I'm paying your paycheck. Do not give your opinion. Your opinion doesn't matter. You're not growing this business. Upon this rock, I will build my church. I'm not asking you to build it. I'm going to build it. I'm asking you to do what I called you to do. I'm asking you to present the word that I gave you. To speak the words I told you to speak. To go out into all the world. Preach the gospel. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. That's your call as an ambassador. To go out and love people. To serve people. To witness. That's your call. Amen. Everything else, it's nonsense. I don't need it. Amen. Psalm 105 says, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Make known His deeds among the people. Amen. Sing unto Him. I like the word unto. It doesn't say about. It says sing unto Him. Sing songs unto Him. Sing psalms unto Him. Talk ye of his wondrous works. It didn't make any kind of mention about, and while you're at it, tell him how you feel about it. 2 Timothy 4 says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. In other words, go out, witness, be an evangelist, do that work. Do the work that I've called you to do with the words that I've given you, with the tools that I've given you. If I'm going over and over and over in this again, it's because I intend for it to take root. I'm already aware that there's some of us here that shut down this word before I spoke it. And I'm aware that there's others here that want to walk in kingdom power. Now I would to God that yokes will be broken throughout the house. Amen. Another point is that ambassadors are totally covered by the government. In every respect, the government supplies their entire need. That's correct. So when an ambassador is hired for a job, if America sends out an ambassador into another nation, to the American embassy in that nation, I guarantee you they're not purchasing their own food. They're not paying their hotel room bill. They're not wondering how it is they're going to get from point A to point B. They don't have to worry about those things because they know that all of their need is supplied according to His riches and glory. They know that all of their need is supplied according to the one that sent them. He's paying the bills. He'll supply their need. That's why Jesus says, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about where you're, going to, where you're going to stay. Don't worry about those things. Why not? Because I'm going to supply your need. I've made you to be an ambassador. And as I put you in a position and I send you out, I'm going to supply you with what you need along the way. John 13, 14 says, And whatsoever ye ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Amen. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. And the text that I've just quoted that's popular is Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Next point is ambassadors are totally 
protected by the government. These are not just things I'm making up. You look up what an ambassador is all about. You look up what it looks like to be an ambassador and what the dictates of that job look like. And these are the things that that job looks like. And if you're an ambassador of Christ, then you got to know that the word God chose to use was deliberate. He didn't call you an ambassador and not mean that you are an ambassador. He called you an ambassador because these things are true about the position He's given you. So an ambassador is totally protected by the government. Proverbs 18 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Isaiah 54 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Folks, when Jesus was standing before Pilate, and Pilate began to get cocky and say, you know what, brother? Here's the deal. I'm the one in charge right now. I'm the boss. I'm, I, if I wanted to do this to you, I want you to know that I can have you put to death right now. I just want you to be aware of who's in charge right now. And Jesus, for the first time in the trial, decides to speak up. He's been quiet the whole time. He says, look, my kingdom's not of this world. I want you to know that right now I could call down a host of angelic armies right now. To deliver me if I wanted to. So just so you're aware. Your kingdom ain't greater than my kingdom. My kingdom is above your kingdom. That I am totally protected by the government of that kingdom. All I got to do is call on the help. And help's coming. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Nothing. And it's no different for you as the ambassadors of God. You're seated and unified with Christ. I know this is redundant. But you've been made one with Him. Jesus Christ is Lord. And what's at His disposal is at your disposal as a co-heir with Him. Let me tell you something. If Christ has angels watching over His back, then you've got to know you've got an angelic host watching over your back. Amen. Folks, what I see is a lot of church is not kingdom minded. And therefore we don't function under the dictates of the kingdom. Because what you fix your mind on, what you do mind, which should be things above and not things beneath, is what your life is going to produce. So you can be an ambassador all day long by position and not walk in that position. And if you live your life defeated and wondering why it is you can't seem to overcome certain things, then you need to reevaluate your way of thinking because God has already supplied all of your needs. God has already positioned you in every possible way. He says you lack no good thing. You are a partaker of His divine nature. You have everything that you need in order to walk this thing out. If it's not working well for you, then you need to regear your thinking. You need to think differently. You need to think on things above. Where Christ is seated, where you are also seated with Him. You need to start thinking different. Folks, real talk, real talk. I'm going to ask you a question. If God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who in the world could be against you? If God has said you're approved, then should the world not watch out? Here there is no higher kingdom. Be imitators of God. Folks, an ambassador is called to imitate the head of his kingdom. An ambassador is called to function Like whoever's in charge of that kingdom. Who's in charge of that kingdom? And how did he function? When you look in the four gospels, what did Jesus do? How did he do it? How did he say it? How did he approach it? When there wasn't enough to eat, how did he approach it? Was it, oh God, what are we going to do? Or was it, bring me what you have. We'll make it happen. I know who sent me. I know who supplies my need. Folks, I hate to make this analogy, but ambassadors are like sales reps. Not that they're out to sell something, but I deal with sales reps enough to know that they're the face of the company. And they know that they're the face of the company. They know what the company mission is. They don't have any questions as to whether or not they can sell a certain product. They know what their job is. They know what they've been called to do. What they don't do is pick up the phone and call the owner of the company and say, hey, I've got this potential sale. 
What do you think? Should I sell it? No, they do what they've been called to do. Because the day that they got hired, they were given a position. They were given power. They were given authority. They were given the right to go out and function as the face and the representative of the company. They were given all the tools that it takes to get the job done. They were even given recommendations on how to approach some things. They were pointed in the right direction and said, go here, go here, go here. Approach these people, their potential sales. They were sent out into a world equipped already to do what it is that they're called to do. Wouldn't it be foolish if like the church, that we would turn back around and call upon the owner of the company and say, I'm not really sure if you would have me to do this work. I'm not sure that I'm really equipped. I think maybe I need a few more tools. I think I'm lacking something you said I wasn't lacking. Hey, I know you gave me a this or that and the other to do the job, but I just don't know that it's going to work that way. Wouldn't that be foolish? But God has appointed you as ambassadors in the kingdom above all kingdoms. And sent you out to a world, I don't know how else to put it, to do a work that you've been called to do, to dismantle the works of darkness, to colonize heaven on earth, to bring the kingdom of glory into your own life and those around you so that people will taste and see that the Lord is good when you encounter folks in this life so that they will see Christ in you. Not just so that they'll experience Christ in you so that when you go out into the store, that when you leave, there's such an aroma of Christ that's left behind that they're they're compelled to change. They have no choice but to call upon the God of heaven. That when you would go into Kroger's and buy a gallon of milk and some and some bread, that when you walk out of that place, they feel such a glory after the things you said, and the way that you communicated with them and the way that you treated them and the way that you weren't hateful to them and talked down to them, the way that you presented Christ. And you shared the word with them or whatever it is that you had to do in that moment. When you walk away, there's such an aroma left there that they start to wrestle with their own spirituality. They go home and say, man, I had an encounter today, Lord. I want to know, are you the one? Are you real? That's your call is to bring change into this world, to bring heaven into earth, to be the ambassador that walks like God would walk so that God doesn't have to get up off his throne and do it himself, even though he could. Your call is to go in His stead and to do exactly what God would do, exactly the way that God would do it, to say exactly what God would say, to walk in the same power that God would have, to have the faith of God, not faith in God, but the faith of God, so that when it is that you need to move a mountain, the mountain moves, so that you can go out and function like Jesus would function. Amen. It's as cut and dry as that. That's what an ambassador is. His need is met. He's protected. He's surrounded by secret service, angelic hosts. He ain't got to worry about whether or not he's going to make it. He goes out into a foreign land that's unfamiliar to him. Knowing good and well who appointed him. Knowing good and well that they are with him wherever they go. They go out to the world and they represent. They are imitators of God. They represent Jesus Christ. You are to be a representation of God. He came once in a manger, lived the perfect life, and now you are to represent that same Jesus in power. That's what an ambassador is called to do. Psalm 149, I want you to go there. I love this text because it is contrary to most of the church's theology. But it's in the book and I ain't going to do anything but read what it says. Psalm 149. I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, Let the saints, that's you and I, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. That would be a good start that we would learn to sing aloud. Because, you know what? God's worthy, if I can just be honest. Amen. What really bothers me is when I catch a glimpse of the way that people act out at sporting events. Amen. And then my mind immediately goes to a church service of how we're frozen. Mm-hmm. And to our shame as full gospel believers, if anybody shouldn't be frozen, it should be us. But it says, let the saints be joyful and glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. It said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them judgment written. This honor have all the saints. There's a lot of, but wait a minute. I don't know that that aligns with my theology. 
I'm going to read it again just because I love this text. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all the saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Folks, the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I see that these nobles and these kings that they're talking about are not people per se, but they're the devils that sway these people. It's the devils that are influencing these people's lives. And as an ambassador of God, you're to go out as God would go out and recognize that these kings and these nobles that are working in this other kingdom aren't going to abide as you go in to colonize. As you go into this kingdom of darkness or into this world, you're invading an atmosphere with higher authority. You're invading an atmosphere with a higher kingdom in inside of you and you've got the keys to it so when these kings and these nobles have people bound on the street or have people bound at the grocery store or have people bound at your work you can go out knowing that you're of a higher kingdom just like Jesus standing before Pilate he says I'm of a higher kingdom than the kingdom you're of I recognize you've got power but it's a small thing to the power of God and as the church goes out the honor that we all have as saints is to go out and wreck what the devil's doing in people's lives to dismantle those kings that have got those people bound to dismantle those nobles that's got people bound. We're to go out as the ambassadors of God, knowing that God is in us, knowing that we're called of Jesus Christ to walk in the power that Jesus Christ would walk in, to dismantle the works of the enemy, to go out and destroy the works of the devil every day of our life, not just sometimes, knowing good and well that our need is supplied, knowing good and well that we're protected by an angelic host, knowing good and well that we have a position and a job to do. Amen. Folks, you've been equipped. You have the resources. You can go miles down the road right now, park yourself in another church, and they will tell you what you need and what you lack and why it is things aren't happening. And I'm telling you right now why it is things aren't happening in your life. Because you don't believe right. You don't think right. It's not because you don't have the tools. It's not because you don't have the position. It's not because God didn't call you. It's not because Christ isn't in you. It's not because you don't have the keys. It's not because you don't have authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all of those sort of things. It's because you don't believe right. I challenge you the next time you're at the flea market, which maybe we can do as a church one Saturday morning, sort morning. When you see somebody with a cane, don't look at me and ask me what I'm going to do. Look in at the one who lives in there. I say, you know what? I'm an ambassador of God. Excuse me, sir. I see you got an issue. I'm here to represent Jesus. That thing's going. The only reason you can't speak in that kind of confidence is because your confidence is not in the one who's in you. You're an ambassador of God, to be an imitator of God. I want to copy what Jesus does everywhere I go. If I see 20 hungry kids and all I got is a cheeseburger, see if I don't raise it to heaven and see what happens. I really believe in that. I'm totally believing that right now. We're to copy what Jesus did, to be an imitator of the Son of the living God. That's right. Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing else. If I do, I'll get, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> Father, I thank you. I just thank you. I pray that such a simple, simple word could be applied. God, it changed my life. I don't know by theory, I know by experience that it works. God, that the people would begin to think like ambassadors. That they would begin to think like kings. That they would begin to think like heirs of the throne. That they would begin to think like folks that's been bought with a price that's seated far above principalities, powers, dominion, and rule. That they begin to think like sons of God who are the head and not the tail. That they would begin to think like the salt of the earth and the light of the world.
Amen. But they would begin to think about the ambassadors of Christ. Like they would think like people that's been bought with this price and put in position God to do the work. I submit my mind to you. It's, it's evident to me, just in one-on-one, just me and you, that there's some things that need reformation in my mind still yet. Well, God, I'm not going to leave the people behind and not give them the goods as you've given them to me. I'm not going to bury something that's of such great value and hide it just because some folks don't want it. If one person takes a hold of it and they change their generation, then it was worth it. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. And then somebody's going to either get it or some of you might quit coming here. I don't know what the end result will be. But what I do know is when I had religion, and I tried to add something to what this book employed me to walk in as an ambassador and I believed upon things that were tradition and not in the book and thought you know what God I'm lacking so many things I can't get the job done I'm so petty and pitiful what am I lacking what am I missing why because the preacher that I sat under for three and a half years told me I needed more Holy Ghost you need more Holy Ghost I mean obviously if you can't walk like Jesus then that must be the problem Problem is, he didn't need more of the Holy Ghost. If that, true, if that was true, he needed the same thing I did because he wasn't walking in power either. There ain't nothing like sitting under a man that tells you what to do that don't know what to do himself. I spent years unable to walk as an ambassador. And a man, I'm still growing. Like Paul said, I do not think that I've already attained in that fashion. From glory to glory. From glory to glory. And I know the current glory far exceeds the former glory. And the very moment God began to reveal to me that I already possessed the things that I had been begging for is the very moment that I started to walk in it. And nine times out of ten, the answer is not what you're missing, what you lack, or what you don't have. It's what you don't understand that you have. Amen. Imagine if you had every key to unlock a building in your pocket and you stood outside beating on the door asking for somebody to let you in. That's what the church is doing. You have the keys to the kingdom of God in you right now. Figure out which door they go to and you will walk like Jesus walked. Amen. I believe it would make God's day after having sent Jesus Christ to die and give his self as a ransom to shed his blood on a ragged tree for the sins of the world. It would make his day that the church could put aside petty, foolish differences and have unity. Amen. Amen. It breaks my heart to know how many people are not here right now because of what they've heard, we believe. I know they've not experienced it out of anybody here. You know, there's people freaked out with coming here to have a beer because they have a beer. I could care less how many hippies there are right now in the world. Good grief is their soul not more important. You're an ambassador of God. That's nowhere in this book. That's in violation of ambassadorship. want to be an imitator of God that's able to love people exactly how they are so much that they change. Yes. Right. Yes. That can meet them where they are. That can love them how they are. Folks, I've had homosexual people enter into my life. And in my past estate, I would tell them, this is your sin, this is your problem, get it right or go to hell. But then I learned over time and meeting with the Lord and learning His nature that when I was able to love them beyond what I saw on the outside and love them for who they were created to be, love them for who Jesus died for, they began to question, aren't you bothered by, you know what I'm living right now, why aren't you even addressing that? 
And then it's at that point I'm saying, because I love you. And Jesus died for you like he did for me. And I want you to know that like most folks with a bullhorn and a soapbox, I'm not here to condemn you. And I want to see you get right. Is, is your current state of sin? Yes, it is. But you're loved. I'm not here to beat you down. God did not send his son into the world to condemn Amen. the world. But that the world through him might be saved. I want to be able to look beyond what I see on the outside. I, I meet homeless people that smell like dumpsters. And most people wouldn't get near them, much less hug them. I want to love them beyond what I see and smell on the outside. And recognize what the blood was shed for. Amen. Go out to the world and be an ambassador of God. Demonstrate God. Imitate God. What would God do? He would lay his life down for them. He would welcome them in as religion turned up a nose and said, if you were a prophet, you would know what manner of woman this was. And he would welcome them in and love them saved. You can't rule somebody saved. You can only love them saved. That's right. You're the ambassadors of God. Imitate Jesus.